Hello and welcome Desert Mountain members to the Desert Mountain Podcast, our 25th podcast, a bit, a bit of a milestone. Uh, my name is Michael Craven. I'm here today with Kim Atkinson. Hello, Kim. Hello, Michael. And we are also joined, do you want to introduce our guest today, Kim? We're Clearly, if you're watching on YouTube, can see we are in the wine cellar at Constantino's. How cool is this? We're in the tower. This is where a lot of wonderful memories are made. And two of the most knowledgeable people on the mountain as it relates to wine have joined us today. Because guess what? Is it wine week? It's wine week. Oh my God, our favorite week. I love this. (laughs) I love everything about it. So uh, without further ado, I would like to introduce Robin Peacock. Robin. Robin. Hi. How are you? Welcome, welcome. (laughs) And Mr. John O'Farrell. John. Thank you for having me. John. Awesome. Great. So we thought the two of you together because Robin oversees the wine store. John, you've been a sommelier for how many years at Desert Mountain? Six years at Desert Mountain. Six years at Desert Mountain. We're going to learn a little bit about both of you. And first of all, I'll start with Robin. I know you've been here a long time. How, how many years celebrating um, at Desert Mountain? 16 years uh, wow. this past September. That's a round of applause right there just for that. Awesome. Amazing. So good. All right. And before that, did you? how did you end up at the mountain? Um, well, I started here at Constantino's, actually, uh, as a server. And so I had some friends that I worked with previously that brought me, you know, told me about the job opening here at Constantino's. And it kind of um, grew into... Um, working at the retail wine store for Desert Mountain, so it's really great. Fantastic. I've heard all about this wine store. We're going to learn more about this. Okay. <laughs> and John, before coming to Desert Mountain, um, how did you? How did we find you? I came through Indeed. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, I was the first sommelier on Mountain um, as, as a certified sommelier. Um, March of 16, uh, started here at Constantino's for five years and I've been at Apache for one. Wow. So exciting. And so, um, we just have so much to learn about some of the programs that the two of you have brought to our members and a lot of exciting new things that have happened over the last few months too. Um, so I'm going to start a little bit. Um, so Robin, it's not really a store that we walk into. That's correct. We call it a virtual wine store. Um, so you can order wine through John or different wine dinners we offer or tastings. Uh, or can, you can give me a call or email me. Let me know what you're looking for. I will bring it in. And then once it's here, then I'll call you or email you and let you know you can come by and pick it up. And we're located at the fairway office, uh, the main business office. there. And it, it's funny, too, because if you spend time at fairways, Everyone knows Robin because she's constantly has wine coming back and forth up and down the hallway every day. And, uh, yeah, I'm always impressed. You've probably put your hand to touch more wine than anyone else on the mountain. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> Fantastic. And so, um, so, John, tell us a little bit, what does it take to become a sommelier? That's a good question. Um, my path was the long one. Okay. Um, I'll start with that. Uh, I worked my way up uh, from a 19-year-old busser in Santa Fe, New Mexico. I was always in fine dining, and it just came, was, came naturally, or it was always a part of that. Um, my wife, though, really pushed me to focus, and, and it was chef or sommelier, and I went sommelier. So you, so you had to drink a lot of wine, is basically what you're saying. <laughs> I, I have consumed my share of wine. <laughs> <laughs> How does it work? I, mean, they, I know people talk about, I've heard people, there's different levels to it, right? And you yes. have to kind of work your way up. Uh, how, did you do, how did you work your way up that way? How long did it take, I guess, to get to where you are now? Um, I would say, well, I've, I've studied wine for 13 years now, 14 mm-hmm. years now. Um, solid, where I'm doing it as a as that's my profession, I want to be wine focused. Um, I I know guys that have done it in a couple years. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're just in that right environment. They're, they're, they're being sponsored and taught by a lot of really good people. And, and they come up that way. Like if you go to French laundry, I'm sure the busters are level one song. (laughs) Wow. Wow. Probably. Yeah. Um, I've, I've known one that one that went from a busser at French laundry, uh, uh, master Sir Lucero, uh, he was the he was the youngest master psalm that ever hap- 
that ever was. Wow. And he started as a busser at French Laundry, and in four years, he became Master Song. Wow. I think it's something like four years. That's a amazing development plan yes for somebody. You, you have to have you have to be able to retain so much yeah. to be able to even accomplish that uh, but you have more experience john you have, you have the years <laughs> under your belt that's i think true. that's important that's true <laughs> all right so the tastings that we do um i know we're getting ready to do a really fabulous wine dinner in a few minutes and we're going to learn more about that um i wanted to ask about our buy the glass program because i know that's one of the more recent things that we have developed and there were some changes that were made john can you talk just a little bit about what members can expect with the wine by the glass maybe they haven't really understood that there's been changes made what what have we done with that program well i mean if you if you've been on mountain for a couple years at least um everybody should have noticed the pricing changes uh which is a big step in the right direction for for all the members and I think it's been very well received. We, we've we lowered all the pricing by 20% wow. across the board. That's Incredible. bottles, by the glass, everything, um, which allowed us to put in much bigger names without charging, you know, an arm and a leg to get to. Uh, where before, you know, the markups kind of took things into, like, you're starting to get into $20 plus a glass and $30 plus a glass. Um, but I think with some of the things we have in now um, – I mean, Farni- we have Farniente by the bottle for $48 in the by the glass column, um, 13 a glass. And it's, I mean, you can't even buy it that cheap at Costco. Wow. I mean, it, it's moving quite well. And that's what we're here to do, right? We're here to serve our members, provide them with opportunities um, in their own club. That's right. With their friends, with their families, and enjoy a beautiful glass of wine. So I know that was a big deal and something that you and your team worked very hard on. Um, there's a lot more to learn about the wine program. And before I do that, I have somebody I want to introduce. Michael. Oh, we what is a, going on here? This is a first for the podcast. Well, we need to bring on to this podcast somebody who actually has done a lot of podcasts. Oh, okay. Uh, she's also um, a producer of the Mountain Minute uh, email blast. I'm sure that you've read it. I know who you're talking about now, and yes, I have. And this person's name is Margaret Stewart. Can we please welcome to the podcast Margaret Stewart? Margaret. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to um, hand over the headphones and hand over the microphone for Margaret to ask some questions of our lovely guests from the podcast. So beautiful, Margaret, come on in. Come on in, Margaret. Margaret, welcome. Hi. This is the first time our members get to officially meet Margaret. And uh, if you're watching on YouTube, you can see her smiling face here at the table. And thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. I'm so glad to be here. Happy to be on the mountain and meet some of our fantastic members. And being with John, (laughs) this has been really great. So I have a few questions about wine as a wine enthusiast myself. I think that's one of the reasons you're here, too. I heard that you're a wine enthusiast. I haven't gotten to enjoy a happy hour with you yet, Not but yet. hopefully coming soon. Yes. And so, yeah, you sound like uh, you're the right person in the chair for, for this podcast. So, yeah, take it away. Anything you can think of. My, my big thing is, speaking with my friends who also enjoy wine, we always discuss varietals. What are our favorite varietals? What are things that we're looking for? A lot of my friends do not like Chardonnay. And I thought that was a, a, a big thing that people were really into. What are your favorite varietals, John? Uh, that is Uh-oh. a loaded question that, for John. That, that is a tough one. Um, <laughs> so I don't have one specific varietal that I like. Mm-hmm. I like I like matured reds or older reds, and I like young young whites, so where they have crisp acidity still. Uh, I think those are probably my favorites. Great. Robin? Well, I agree with John that there's not a specific varietal. Um, I do love um, Pinot Noirs and softer reds, um, but I appreciate you know a big red and understand the you know the things that go in, that are involved in making that wine and why it would be very tannic or whatever um, because of where the the grapes are grown and how they're pressed and, and aged and all that. So, But I also do enjoy a wonderful white 
And I do love Chardonnay, but I like a crisp white wine. White um, burgundy. Yep. <laughs> Wonderful. Yep. <laughs> Super you, yummy. you mentioned, Margaret, that, you know, you have friends that don't like Chardonnay. Yes. Now, that's kind of a thing I've noticed with a lot of people. They're either a red person or they're a white person. And there are red people who don't drink white or vice versa. You, John, like, would you take that as a challenge if someone said, I just don't like whites? Would you say, I'm, eh, I'm going to find a white that you do like? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. <laughs> do, you, do, you, do you get that a lot? I get that a tremendous amount. Is I, it is it more people that like the red or white, or what do you find? Um, I mean, we're a pretty broad club, so I, I would say that, that Chardonnay and Cabernet dominate here. Really? But yes, very much so. Um, you'll have people that... I only drink big red, but then they'll drink a, a really delicious white burgundy, which is a hundred percent Chardonnay, but made very differently. Oh. Um, it's not, it's not the big, um, extractive vanilla bomb that you get from California. It's more crisp minerality. Um, it's just delicious. They're very, very good. We'll have to talk after the podcast. Maybe you can turn me on to, to more white. <laughs> well, I like white wines, but I'm from California and maybe that's where I've been going wrong is, Really keeping my Chardonnay focus in California and not branching out, so to speak, yeah. on my white wines. It can be very different depending on what part of the world it comes from, for sure. Yeah. Well, I'll have to get some tips for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and then if you were going to go to a dinner, a friend's house, you know, I always bring a bottle of wine. Do you have a specific bottle of wine that you bring everywhere you go? Or do you pick and choose? I, I pick depending on their flavors. Ooh. I would have to agree with that. Yeah. That's got to be. You got to know your friends and what they like. <laughs> I, so, yeah. I ask them what they like first, and and feel them out. Like, what's your best bottle you've ever had? And just so I can <laughs> extrapolate the flavors in my head to to give them something they might enjoy. I think that's good advice for anybody. Yeah. yeah. Why not? Just ask them before you before you head over and take a chance on something they might not like. It's a personal touch. Yeah. And you know, you find it as a challenge, and then you when you bring that into their lives, hey, I'm going to go back and see if I can find that bottle as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm always exciting so with the wine store specifically how did this come about for you has there been any big changes that you feel the members should know about if they don't already know about it within the wine program well we did lower our prices across the mountain that was part of um, what john was speaking on earlier Uh, so that's a great value Uh, we're also adding a lot more events this year um, and so that helps members um get exposed to a lot more varietals and um, different flavors and styles of wine. So, so that's really great. Um, do, you, do you know any, any events, uh, sorry, events specifically that are coming up? I know I've got a couple written down on my calendar. Uh, May 4th is our end of winter season wine sale. And oh, that's wonderful. a complimentary wine tasting taking place at Cochise Geronimo from 5 until 7 p.m. So um, that's going to be great. And they're also um, coordinating that with a food truck and live music. So um, you can come and taste some wine and do some samples. And then afterwards, you can go to the food truck and grab a bite and listen to some live music. So that would be a great event. It's a popular, very popular one. So maybe get there early, right, John? It is a huge (laughs) event. I think it's one of the best we do through the year for sure. And with the wine tastings, I know there are some that are offered on the mountain weekly. Is that a different label every week or is it one varietal is it one what wines are chosen for those so i i deal with that quite a bit um we do patio tastings at apache on wednesdays and we do patio tastings on thursdays at constantino's that's every week every week i hope um, all of our members know about that because i didn't even know that you were doing that weekly that's amazing that's really cool yeah it's a lot of fun and, and members get to try fun wines the vendor gets to pick the wines um, we, we give them that, that concession. So they, they bring up what wines they want to show to the members. Um, members get to try them for free on the way in the door or out the door or in the middle. <laughs> um, and, uh, the, they have the ability to buy through Robin at, through the wine store. Um, any bottle that's on the table. I would assume that also happens like when you get a wine list at dinner, if there's something that you really love, the, ob- the odds of that being in the wine store available to you. Also very high. 
Right, so we can order that wine. Um, a lot of times members will take a picture right at the table and say, hey, can you get this wine? So um, when I open my emails in the morning. <laughs> you get, I, I, have wit- I have witnessed there, members so. doing this. <laughs> uh, and then, yes, we, you know, as long as they have some wine in stock still, um, sometimes John will buy the whole lot. And then <laughs> or he'll I have to get ahead of them. Cases for oh, me. yeah. Um, and then, yeah, so I can reach out to the distributor and then get the wine here within the week. I'm sure you're a distributor's mm-hmm. best friend. <laughs> getting cases and cases sold. I mean, right at the dinner table, which is impressive. Yeah. It's very rare that you find a wine that you're like, okay, I'm, I'm going to buy this right now. I love it that much. Yeah. But with this extensive wine list, yes. I'm sure there's a favorite for everybody on it. Um, let's get into just, uh, and we'll close it out here, uh, you know, pretty soon here, but I just wanted to get back to the event uh, stuff. One thing that we did mention earlier was the, the uh, free tastings, the the tastings that are complimentary to our members. Just wanted to ask you, um, do they need a reservation or can they just kind of stop by for those? No, patio tastings are are, um, open to all. So even if you're not eating at that restaurant, but you wanted to go try the wine, you could. Very cool. There is live music as well, I believe. Yeah, both restaurants would be having live music at the same time. That's true. How do you you not not (laughs) have a lovely wine tasting and some, some entertainment? That doesn't yeah. sound too bad for a you know, I, Wednesday. Yeah. I've said before, yeah, I think I would be there every every week for sure. Yeah. All right, so as we do, as we move into the summer months, uh, can you talk a little bit about the programming that is going to be happening over the summer? Yeah, of course. Um, you, uh, as far as as far as summer programming goes, um, in most summers we 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 would take it down a little bit because a lot of people would go on vacations, and uh, we almost felt like we didn't have enough to enough people to support dinners of yeah. of the scal- of the caliber we do. Not the um, case anymore. Not the case anymore. Um, we're setting up dinners at Apache every month through the summer. Wow. We're setting up dinners every month at at Constantinos and CG as well. So. All three outlets will be doing wine dinners all through the summer. Pretty cool. Great news for our for our year-round members, of which there are many now. Uh, pretty awesome. And Robin, I know that you have some situations for members that you would like to remind them about. Um, yes, just that. Um, so wines purchased through the wine store do not apply to your food and beverage minimum. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then also that um, a credit card is needed for payment. And that is because uh, it, that's an Arizona liquor law, so we're not able to put the wine purchase on a member charge. So that's why we're one of the only locations on the mountain that accepts a credit card right now. So we're learning but a it works lot out fine. about liquor laws in the state of Arizona. <laughs> Got right to abide now. by the liquor laws. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> Um, well, uh, is there anything else you wanted to share with uh, the membership, either of you, before we let you go? And I, and I also would just ask you both to, um, you know, if a member was trying to get a hold of you, what the best way to, to do that would be. I do want to say one thing, because uh, I don't see a lot of people using it. Um, when they dropped all the rates down, they also installed almost like a, um, an incentive to eat later on the mountain. So at any of the outlets, if you eat, if you make a reservation at seven forty five or later, you get half off a bottle of wine up to two hundred dollars. What? Um, in doing that, we actually we actually pay you to drink the wine, like a couple <laughs> bucks, but we we're paying you to do yeah. it. Um, it. It drops it below our cost to the club. Yep. Um, it's a wonderful, wonderful um, thing. I would use it immensely <laughs> if, I, if I lived up here. It's something that uh, Greg Leonard did touch on when we had him on the post- podcast last. Yeah. Um, and he did say that they've seen a major uptick um, in those later reservations. For sure. Uh, but yeah, there's definitely room for more. So uh, I, f- uh, I feel like a lot of people don't, still don't know about it. And sure. It's just learning that it's there um, as, a, as a feature of the club. I'm glad we're bringing that up again. Yeah, maybe have a late lunch. Come in for a later dinner yep. and then have half off. Oh, yeah, that is incredible when you put it that way. That yeah. you, we're, you know, we're actually paying you in That's a right. way because the bottle is, I think he said a $100 bottle, you know, $200 bottle for $100 or something like that's that. A, that's 100%. It. Anything yeah. that's $200 or, or under will be halved off. Pretty cool. That's incredible. That's awesome feature. Yeah. Of course. Um, well, my email is joferrell at desertmt.com. Uh, I'm always at Apache. Um, anytime in the evening, I'm, o- I'm always there. Um, Robin. Yep. And then uh, you can reach me. I'm at the Fairways office. So it's rpeacock at desertmt.com. And then um, you could call member services and they'll connect you over to my extension there. And yep. Thanks for having me.
yesterday. So we, we'd like to take an opportunity to recognize the golfers on the mountain who have hit some amazing shots this week. So let's kick that back to the studio and hear about the amazing shots that we've had. All right. Thank you so much, Mike. Now let's raise our wine glasses and cheers to some more incredible shots around the mountain. Sandy McCormick had herself a hole-in-one on February 18th on number 11 at 7. Alan Lowe on March 23rd, a hole-in-one on number 18 at 7. John Iwanski on Friday, March 25th, an eagle on number 7, Renegade. Dr. Mike Irvin, March 30th, an eagle on number 11, Renegade. Susan Richardson on April 1st, also an eagle on number 7, Renegade. Mark Trueblood, April 2nd, a hole-in-one on number 8 at 7. Susan Aronoff, April 3rd, with an eagle on number 17, Renegade. And to round things out, Fred Berman, April 4th, a hole-in-one on number 6, Outlaw. That is Mr. Berman's fourth career hole-in-one. Congratulations to everybody once again, and we look forward to seeing more shots next week. Back to you guys. All right. Thank you very much. Yeah, great. Holes in one. A lot of eagles. A lot of holes in one this week. A lot. We're More ba- than normal. Back in, the, back in the holes in one yeah, column, if you will. <laughs> All right. Well, should we, should we wrap this up, Margaret? Absolutely. Let's your, do your it. Your first appearance on the oh, podcast. Yeah. Yes. Hi. Thanks for having me. <laughs> uh, well, John, thank you very much. Robin, thank you very much. We really appreciate you both being here. Yeah. This has been aw- awesome. Eye opening. Yeah. We learned a lot about wine. We learned a lot about wine today. I hope you did too. Uh, at home and I think that'll wrap it up that's it all right we'll see everyone around the mountain thank you